about taking Lily to her first B90 and taking Bentley to the riding club show Pig championships, had loads of plans, it was all gonna be great and then um, well the coronavirus happened basically so we're all in the same boat it's not a pleasant boat to be in um, and we're all absolutely gutted um, we can't compete anymore and for so many of us that's that's what we do it all for so it is it is gutting, I am gutted, but um, we're actually very lucky. Looking at the positives, and I think we all need to stay as positive as we can, um, we are really fortunate to have a hobby where we, we are very isolated. We can continue to do our hobby very safely. We don't have to come into contact with the many people. You cannot give coronavirus to your horse, so um, y you can rest assured that you can keep keep seeing your horses, and that is what's getting me through. Um, oh, Bentley's being a bit weird, having a little scratch, showing how flexible he is, which is very relevant. So. Um, I thought because we're all stuck at home or just training now is actually a really good time to try something new with our horses and um, so what I wanted to do a few videos of is like how-to videos um, I'm still gonna do my normal like vlogs for when I go out and cause I'm hoping to still be able to get out and go to lessons and stuff like that but um, yeah I thought as we're all stuck at home now's the time to start trying something new with our horses so, I'm going to do some how-to videos, basically. No! Excuse me. Excuse me. Anyway, um, the first of these how-to videos is going to be carrot stretches. Um, lots of people know what they are. Lots of people know that they should be doing them. But I do think people probably don't do them as often as they should. Um, and some people as well might be a bit nervous about doing them because maybe their physio or osteo or chiropractor showed them once that it was a while ago and they don't know if they're quite doing them right. So I thought this can be a useful little reference for lots of people um, to make sure that they're doing them correctly. A lot of people will know that I'm training to be an equine chiropractor. Um, I've been studying for it for five and a half years now. Um, I qualify in November, provided good old Corona doesn't for a spanner in that works as well. Um, but yeah, I qualify in November. Um, I did an undergrad first in equine sports science and now I'm doing a master's in mixed mini chiropractic. So carrot stretches are something that we do a lot of on our course. Um, we really try and like drum home the importance of them. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's look at some carrot stretches. So another thing I'd like to say as well, just before I show you what we're doing, um, if you're in any doubt that your horse shouldn't be doing this, maybe it's had an injury or something like that, ask your vet, ask your therapist, whatever one you choose to use, um, if you have are in any doubt. There's lots of reasons why horses might not be able to do certain stretches. Uh, Another thing to mention is please don't do these on a cold horse. If it's for, if your horse has been in all night and it's first thing in the morning, now's not the time to do carrot stretches. Do them after they've been ridden. Think about it yourself. If you get out of bed in the morning, the last thing you want to be doing is stretching. Um, it's really dangerous. Um, it's not good for the muscles at all. So do it with warm muscles. Bentley, we're trying to have a serious conversation. <laughs> If in any doubt, ask your vet or your therapist. 
Um, do not just go off of my YouTube video saying, oh, well, that YouTube video told me to do it. If in any doubt whatsoever, ask somebody who's seen your horse in the flesh. Be careful, basically. They are very safe to do, but you have to just be sensible. So, I think I've said everything I need to say. Um, yeah, let's get started. Number one, we are taking your treat. And we're just doing the chin into the chest. I hold these, because Bentley's very used to it, I can hold this stretch for quite a long time, 30 seconds approximately. Um, he'll hold the stretch until I release the treat. Um, what you want to be making sure is that his neck is staying nice and straight and it's not tilting. So this is tilting too much. Um, you want to try and keep it as straight as you can, like that. And that stretches all the muscles along the top of his neck and all through his pole. Good boy. So, stretch number two um, is going to stretch all these muscles in this pole area, which is just between his ears. Um, we're going to take his head to this position, which is very similar to that chin to chest position last one, and we're going to move his nose side to side. Um, quite slowly in a sort of pendulum swinging motion um, and what that does is just stretches and mobilizes all the muscles up here in the pole just in this area here um, which is a really common place for lots of horses to get very tight in so just take it side to side like I say he can hold it for 30 seconds or a minute um, if you're just starting out with your horse you're going to be doing, holding this for a lot a lot less time. Good boy. Okay, so stretch number three is going to take his head all the way down in between his knees. Um, this is going to stretch. I want you to watch over the top of his back, so where the saddle goes, just how much movement he gets when he does this stretch. So you slowly take the treat between the fat locks, like this, keeping the treat as close to the floor as you can, in between the legs and look how much movement you get in that lumbar area, the area just behind the saddle. Comes all the way back. Good boy. Also what you want to look out for here is look at the line at the bottom where that's those stomach muscles are. Those are really engaging and it's those core muscles that are going to make your horse so much stronger in the long run. Here's another angle where you can really see those stomach muscles engaging and that's what happens when we ride, when we want our horse to work in an outline, we want those stomach muscles to engage to support our weight so their head drops and their hind leg comes underneath them and that's the whole aim of, of riding them. So stretch number four, I'm going to be taking him, I'm going to stand at his shoulder and with his head straight I'm going to be pulling him, taking him all the way around to this side. So this is stretching all these muscles down the side of his neck the, and then all the muscles in his shoulder on the outside. Again, he holds this for like 30 seconds a minute and it's a nice wide stretch. And he does that the same amount of time, one side to the other side with his head staying nice and straight. So his ear, this is how to, this is if he was gonna do it wrong, he'd have his ears, he'd have his head tilted like that. So his ears start to look at the floor. Good boy. So the next three stretches, I link up all together. Um, and what I do is I take his nose to his shoulder, then to the end of his rib cage, and then to the end of his hip. Um, and it's you just gradually build up the amount of stretch so you're so you're not going to a sort of great big lunge up to the full range of motion you're gradually taking it further and further each time all the time as well be looking for those muscles in his stomach those abdominal muscles they're the ones that are engaging as well um, and that's what's going to be making him nice and strong so here we are we just go to the shoulder to start the stretch 
and then we bring it round slowly slightly further back and at this point start watching those stomach muscles engage again you can see that line at the bottom they're really having to hold that position making that core core giving that real core strength which is really what we want supporting a, a rider's weight under the saddle he's he's going to stretch all the way back to his hip he stood square on on all four of his legs and he's weight bearing on all four which is also what we want and he's stretching all through that neck as well. So it's a really, really nice stretch. So this final stretch, we're taking his nose all the way down to his fetlock. Hind fetlock, he needs to be weight bearing square on all four of his legs. And just watch the stretch through those stomach muscles. This is stretching the outside of his shoulder, outside of his neck, all the way down through his back and through his gluteals as well. So this is just another angle of the same stretch where we're taking his um, head to his hind fetlock. And what is really nice to see here is just how much bend you're getting in the rib cage. So those intercostal muscles, um, which are between each rib on the other side, the side we're not seeing, are stretching hugely and the ones we're seeing are contracting. So from this angle, we see those stomach muscles really engage and most of all those intercostal muscles really stretch out between each rib. And in a stressy, anxious horse that um, carries a lot of its tension in its breathing, I find personally, I've seen a lot of those types of horses get very tight in between those intercostal muscles. So really stretching those muscles out well um, can have a really good relaxing effect on the horse. It can control its breathing a bit better and it can learn to just relax which is something you might not expect from just a stretch but it does really help what this stretch aims to do is stretch all these muscles underneath his neck um, because he does primarily show jumping um, and is quite sort of ponyish in his action as well these are the muscles that get quite tight and um, so as well as all the soft tissue work that I do on them we also do this stretch so what we do is you Take the nose all the way out. You try and keep the head nice and straight. <laughs> no, that's just cheating. Keep the head as straight as you can. And you can just see the stretch in those muscles underneath his neck. And he stretches out as long and long as he can. Stretching out all these muscles under here which is really, really good for him, especially after he's worked, especially after he's jumped. And he can hold that for about 30 seconds or a minute. So that was a very brief look at um, all the stretches that you can do for the horse's back and neck. Um, there's lots of other ones that you can, of course, do um, that are you know, specific to your horse that your local therapist might be able to help you with. Um, and there's also quite a few limb stretches as well that you can look at. Um, might do those in another video, um, but for now, that's enough to be getting on with. Um, time to wrap the ponies back up. Um, today's been their lunging day um, and stretches. So um, yeah, we will crack on with the training. Hopefully get to be doing another vlog, perhaps um, maybe a hacking vlog, or I know I've got a couple of jumping sessions booked. Excuse me, Bentley. Thank you. No. Yeah, I've got a couple of jumping lessons booked with two different instructors. So hopefully we'll, um, we'll video those as well and we will ride out this Corona storm together, stay motivated, keep going with our horses and so that when the competition season starts back up again, we are ready to pick up where we left off and um, yeah, hit the ground running. How we might! Maybe be eventing in 2020, maybe in the very end of it, if we're all sensible and follow the social distancing guidelines, please be sensible everybody and do that. Um, and yeah, we've just got to hope and pray that this coronavirus doesn't ruin the entire year, basically. Oh, I really hope so. Right, everybody, good luck in the next couple of trying weeks. Stay sane, stay safe, be sensible, you know, do do good things for the community and and hopefully we'll all pull through.
So thanks for watching. Let me know down below in the comments if there are any other videos you'd like me to do how-tos of. Look out for my how to long rain one soon. And uh, yeah, see you next time.